Chemistry lecture number 93, acid and base ionization constants. Acetic acid, or HC2H3O2, is a weak acid. An acetic acid solution has a lot of intact HC2C3O2 molecules. So very little of it ionizes to form hydrogen ion and acetate ion. So, if you have acetic acid, uh, you'll have a lot of these molecules, and very few of these will break apart into these things. There's not going to be very much of this in solution, but there'll be lots of this. Uh, the equilibrium constant expression and value for this reaction would be uh, products over reactants. So here are the products, H plus, acetate, they go on top, and then the reactants go on the bottom. KEQ equals this expression, and uh, the actual value of the KEQ is 1.75 times 10 to the negative fifth. So that's the approximate ratio of uh, products to uh, reactants. Now since this is the equilibrium constant for an acid, A, we write Ka instead of KEQ. So Ka is just sort of a specialized equilibrium constant. It's the equilibrium constant for an acid. Ka is the ionization constant for an acid. Uh, it tells us the strength of the acid. The larger the number, the stronger the acid. Now the Ka value of 1.75 times 10 to the negative fifth is a very small number. You know, it's this number with four zeros in front of it. So acetic acid is a weak acid, and there's very little H plus in the solution. Sometimes the equilibrium reaction for acid is written using the hydronium ion, H3O plus, instead of H plus. So in this case, you show the acid donating a proton to a water molecule to produce the hydronium ion and uh, the acetate. And then the KAQ expression would be products over reactants. So these two guys go on top, and then these two guys go on the bottom. And I suppose I could have written this as just Ka also. Now H2O, uh, the concentration of water, doesn't really change much since the reaction occurs in a water solution. Uh, the number of water molecules that react compared to the total amount of water is so negligible that H2O can be considered as an unchanging number or constant. Now if we multiply both sides by the concentration of H2O, it looks like this. So here's the expression of the equilibrium constant, the products over the reactants. I'm going to multiply both sides by H2O. So KEQ times concentration of H2O gives that. This expression times H2O gives this times H2O. And then what you should notice is that um, the H2Os cancel here, and that just gives KEQ concentration of H2O equals this expression, and then since both of these are just numbers, a constant in place of KEQ times concentration of H2O, we just substitute Ka, and we say Ka equals this expression, which is the same as what we had originally, Ka equals H plus times this. So the only difference between these two is that this one has H plus on top and this one has H3O plus. And these things are equivalent, and you might remember that from a previous uh, lecture that when we write H3O plus, we also mean H plus. Kb is the ionization constant for a base. Uh, it tells us the strength of the base or the relative amount of hydroxide. For example, ammonia reacts with water to produce uh, ammonium and hydroxide. So here's the reaction. NH3 reacts with H2O to produce NH4 and hydroxide. And then the equilibrium constant expression is products over reactants. NH4 and OH go on top. And then NH3 and H2O go on the bottom. Now we can do the same thing with this expression that we did with um, the other acid expression that had water in it. We'll multiply both sides by water. So KEQ times the concentration of water gives this. This fraction times the concentration of water gives this. And then once again, concentration of water cancels. You're just left with these three items right here. And then in place of KEQ times H2O, since this is the equilibrium constant of a base, we just write KB equals NH4 times OH divided by NH3. Now the KB for ammonia is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. This is also a very small number, so NH3 is a weak base. 
Now, if you know the uh, Ka or Kb, you can calculate the concentration of hydrogen ion or hydroxide. So let's try a problem. Uh, what is the concentration of hydrogen ion in a 0.04 molar solution of acetic acid? And the acid constant value is 1.75 times 10 to the negative fifth. All right, so here's how we approach this problem. They give us the concentration and they tell us what the acid constant uh, is. Well, if you had, <coughs> excuse me, one liter of 0.04 molar acetic acid, it means that you started with 0.04 moles of acetic acid, but some of it ionized and became hydrogen ion and acetate. Now, if 0.01 moles ionized, you'd have 0.04 minus 0.01 equals 0.03 moles of acetic acid remaining, and 0.01 moles of H plus and acetate. All right, so this is the amount you start with, and if 0.01 moles of this ionize, the amount of acetic acid remaining is 0.04 minus 1, and you'd have 0.03 moles of acetic acid remaining. If 0.01 moles ionize, then you'd also end up with 0.01 moles of uh, hydrogen ion and acetate. That's if 0.01 moles of it ionized. But we don't know how much ionized, so let's just call the amount x. So, if x moles of acetic acid ionized, you'd have 0.04 minus x remaining. All right? And for every x moles of acetic acid that ionized, you'd get x moles of hydrogen ion and x moles of acetate. So, let's do this. Here's the reaction showing how it uh, dissociates. All right? So here's acetic acid. The original amount of acetic acid is 0.04. We don't know how much it dissociates, so we'll say x amount dissociates. If x amount dissociates, then the amount of acetic acid remaining is 0.04 minus x. All right? If x amount of acetic acid dissociates, then it's going to create x amount of hydrogen ion and x amount of acetate ion. Now the expression for the acid constant is products over reactants. So these two guys go on top and this thing goes on the bottom. And then in place of these symbols here, we write the uh, concentrations of each of these items. And these things here represent what the concentrations of the items are. So concentration of H plus, well, we don't know, we call it X. Concentration of acetate, also X. The concentration of acetic acid remaining, 0.04 minus X. That goes on the bottom. All right. So now all we have to do is just solve for X, and that'll tell us the amount of H plus that's in solution. Now, you could go ahead and solve this normally mathematically. You'd end up with a quadratic equation, and you'd have to use the quadratic formula. But there is a little trick that we can use. 1.75 times 10 to the negative fifth is such a small number that x has to be very tiny. Thus, if x is such a small number, 0.04 minus x is virtually equal to 0.04. So we say 0.04 minus x is going to be approximately equal to 0.04. It's probably something like 0.039999, something so close to 0.04, we'll just call it 0.04. All right. So the reason why we know x is such a tiny number is because this is a tiny number. The only way this can be a tiny number is these x's here have to be really tiny. All right. So that's a shortcut we're going to use. So since 0.04 minus x is approximately equal to 0.04, we can just write 0.04 on the bottom instead of 0.04 minus x. And this is easier to solve. All right. So mathematically, if you solve for this, you know, multiply both sides by 0.04 and then take the square root, you'll get x equals 8.37 times 10 to the negative fourth molar of H plus. And that's our answer. So it's not the exact answer, but this answer is so close to what the uh, actual answer is, uh, we don't worry about it. All right. And when you take uh, quantitative analysis in college, uh, they'll actually show you a process called iteration to find the really closest value of x. But for uh, this level, since we're just learning this, we just approximate. So that's our answer. That's how much hydrogen ion is in a 0.04 labeled bottle of acetic acid. Now the rule I like to follow is that if Ka or Kb is 
10 to the negative fourth or smaller, it's okay to approximate and say that x is a negligible value that can be disregarded in the denominator. In this problem, um, the ka is 10 to the negative fifth, so that's even smaller. So that allows us to use the approximation since we have such a small ka value. Let's try another problem. What is the concentration of hydroxide in a 0.02 molar solution of ammonia? What's the percent ionization? And we're given that the KB value is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. All right, so, <clears throat> well, percent ionization asks what percent of the original amount of ammonia ionized to produce hydroxide and ammonium. So we first need to find out how much hydroxide is produced. So the first part of this problem, we solve it the same way as the uh, previous problem. So we have a 0.02 molar solution. All right. So here's the reaction. Ammonia reacts with water to produce ammonium and hydroxide. We started with 0.02 molar. All right. X amount of it uh, reacts to produce our products. Um, if X amount of it reacts, the amount of this remaining is going to be 0.02 minus X. All right. And then for every X that reacts, you're going to have X amount of ammonium and X amount of hydroxide. All right, so these are what we use to represent the concentrations of the uh, products and reactants. All right, the equilibrium expression is going to be products over reactants. So NH4 plus here, OH there, and then on the bottom go the reactants. NH3 goes on the bottom, and notice that I didn't write H2O again. This is occurring in an aqueous solution, and the change in the amount of water is so negligible that we can just eliminate it. So you can just sort of make a note in your head that anytime you write the equilibrium constant, and if you end up with water on the bottom, you can just cross it out. All right. So KB equals this expression. KB is given as 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. NH4 is X. Hydroxide, X. The amount of ammonia, 0.02 minus x. All right. This number is a very small number, 10 to the negative fifth. So since this is a small number, that means x has to be a small number. So we're going to assume x is a negligible value. And we can assume that 0.02 minus x is virtually the same as 0.02. So instead of writing this whole thing, we'll write 0.02 instead. All right. So now if you solve for this, expression, multiply both sides by 0.02 and then take the square root, you'll get x equals 6 times 10 to the negative fourth molar of hydroxide. All right. So that's the first part of the answer. That's how much hydroxide uh, we have. And this is also the amount of ammonia that ionized. All right. So if we have, if x is the amount of hydroxide, that also uh, represents the amount of ammonia that ionized. So we can say that 6 times 10 negative fourth molar of NH3 ionized. So to find the percent ionization, we're going to use this value, and we're going to use that value, the original amount and the amount that ionized. So percent ionization is the original amount of ammonia, all right, 0.02, and the amount that ionized times 100. So out of 0.2 molar, this is the amount that ionized. Uh, what you started with divided by how much ionized times 100, that gives us 3%. So what that means is that out of 100 ammonia molecules, three of them ionized to produce hydroxide and ammonium. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 93, acid and base ionization constants.